Hey there, friends, Snibs again. Out right, here in the garage today doing a little bit of goofing around. And <clears throat> I wanted to do a, do a kind of a review on this guy. I might do a little bit more in depth down the road, but uh, we'll do a little bit of chronograph testing, some uh, trigger pulls, and see how I can do as far as accuracy goes. But uh, I just recently picked this. Uh, actually, pretty cool replica looking uh, Smith & Wesson Crossman BB and pellet gun and this one is there they call this one the SNR 357 and the SNR stands for snub nose revolver and uh, it looks really looks the part as far as a Smith & Wesson revolver I've got a couple of my true to life Smith & Wesson revolvers here I've got my this is a it's a 686 I believe <laughs> I don't even remember <laughs> So this is a model 686, yep. So a 686, which is the stainless version. And uh, you can see that uh, these look very similar. <laughs> the grips are different, but these grips a lot look a lot like a Packmeyer. Um, I did check this, double check this to make sure it's uh, clear before I started the video up. And then actually the uh, resemblance is even closer to this is a Model 29, which is in 44 Magnum, and uh, I have a few others. I did just grab these two. They were the first I ran across in the safe, um, but uh, you can see the resemblance uh, uh, all the way around. Pretty, pretty darn cool. Other than the grips, the looks of the grips, um, this thing really has the look. Um, it's nice. It. Uh, it's metal all around, so it really has the nice feel, nice heft of a real uh, revolver. And uh, <clears throat> so the CO2 goes in the handle back here. Um, and then you just uh, push that handle closed when you load it up. There's a screw on the bottom that's covered up by the, the hand grip as well. So it, it really hides the fact um, this one does have uh, removable cartridges um, you push the ejector just like you would on a real uh, Smith & Wesson revolver to eject those now this one is a smooth bore but I've been shooting and it shoots really pretty darn good um, it does come with these BB cartridges that you have to load from the tip and I don't really see the point in these so I'm gonna not even break those out but you can <clears throat> so I do have I do have this other Crossman Remington 1857 uh, revolver and this one does come with two sets of cartridges as well um, which they list one as a BB set of cartridges and one as a pellet set of cartridges and those all load from the back end and uh, lo and behold that those uh, cartridges that come with the 1857 uh, interchange with this guy and vice versa this one they will work in there they are completely different well they're they're a different part uh, you can tell the uh, the little insert on these ones for the SNR are a little bit thicker and so the hole is bigger but uh, they, they do interchange back and forth, and I've tested that all out too. So that's pretty cool if you get uh, both of these, you can mix and match the, the cartridges. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot this uh, with uh, some 7 grain Meister Coogans for starters, as a, and we'll do that across the chronograph. And then uh, I will, I'm also going to use these same cartridges and shoot some some BBs out of it and then we'll switch over and do some some target shooting I have been shooting on this cartridge quite a bit so hopefully uh, we're not going to be running out here so when I did do the unboxing the mail call with it uh, a few days ago uh, I did have for some reason it was hanging up when uh, it was trying to rotate but uh, uh, since then I haven't had any troubles with it so I don't know what was going on there just uh, 
beginner's luck or not luck, I guess. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. We got an error, great. There's a good one. So it does, so the box says up to 400 feet per second. So just so we know, but these are seven green lead pellets. So um, I would expect it to be lower. And it is like in the 50s out here in the garage. So the CO2 being cold is going to affect our velocity as well. That was four, five. That one didn't read. And six. All right. So we got four out of the six shots to register, which gave us a spread of nine and an average of 333. Now let me, so I'm gonna put in some BBs, but I already have the seven green weight of the Meisterkugans put in for the weight of the projectile. <clears throat> so the energy shown for these BBs will be a little bit off. I just loaded those up in the same cartridges, um, just like the uh, 1875 has the uh, rear loading BB cartridges, they call it. 356, so we had a pretty good boost there. 351. 342. 351, 345, how many was that? That was, we got one more. Oh, yeah, that one didn't spin. Yeah, I guess it did. It was sitting in the right place. It felt like it was hanging up. And an error. <laughs> One thing I wanted to check is, are these things rotating? So I always forget. Okay, these ones. So a uh, a Smith and Wesson revolver, when you cock it, rotates uh, counterclockwise. If you're looking at it from the back, and a Colt revolver rotates clockwise. Um, so this Smith and Wesson is rotating the right way. So it is rotating so that's that's nice for being a replica let's uh, let's have a look what was that? <laughs> my bench is a mess um, so the I don't know about the older uh, these older uh, these are this is not a Smith and Wesson but this one's the old Remington and it's rotating, rotating clockwise. I don't know if that's right for um, the Remington. I'll have to do a little bit of research on that. And then let's see if the, so the, uh, the Colt is rotating the right direction. So it's rotating clockwise. That's pretty cool. So a little bit of trivia for you guys there that uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't remember. I did a little bit of research on it years ago when I first found out about that. I think Colt had a patent on his revolver spinning clockwise. And so when Smith and Wesson came out with theirs, they had to go uh, counterclockwise or, or, or vice versa. It might've been vice versa, but uh, let's go ahead and just do a couple of quick trigger pulls on this guy. And then we'll uh, shoot a couple of, shoot a couple of groups and see if we can, uh, it's kind of it does have a pretty heavy double action but uh, I think we can get a reading on it probably 10 10 pounds I'm guessing well, I was wrong it's just kind of gritty feeling but uh, 
seven pounds, 8.2 ounces. Let's do one more. Yeah, not too bad, seven pounds, 3.3 .3 ounces. That gives an average of seven pounds, 5.8 ounces. All right, let's try the uh, single, or, yeah, single action. Oh, you gotta, let me see, I'll clear out. Sorry. So, four pounds, 3.8 ounces. And again. Three pounds, 12 ounces. Do one more. We'll take our average. Always got to remember to push that uh, ready button. And another three pounds, 12 ounces for an average of three pounds, 14.9 ounces. So not a bad trigger for a revolver. So just as a comparison, let's, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to do one quick one just to show you guys. So this is my model 29. Clear that out. This has a nice trigger, but two pounds, 12.9 ounces. And uh, let me set that one down. And this is the 686. Two pounds, 11 ounces. So really pretty darn close to uh, a realistic feeling trigger as well. So let me, uh, I'm gonna cut this off and get my target set up downrange and I'll be right back with you. Stand by. Alrighty, I am back and uh, I've got a couple of splatter burst targets uh, downrange uh, set up. So if you guys have not been around too long, I just, a lot of new people <laughs> added on, but uh, I am kind of uh, uh, sponsored by splatter burst. Um, they, don't pay me anything, but they send me free targets for advertising their their products. I do love the splatter burst targets. Um, if you want to find, uh, so I have a link down below to their website, and that will give you a discount code there. Um, and you can also find these on Amazon now, so it's really easy to shop there. If you've already got an Amazon account and a store going on there, um, you can look in my storefront the first. Link in the description is to my Amazon storefront, and I do have the splatter burst targets in there. Um, they have almost all of the targets there. Um, these square ones, I don't know why, but they do not have this particular style on Amazon. But uh, most all of their roll products and uh, flat products they do have on Amazon, so really convenient and easy to find. So, but uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and. Uh, do a couple of groups here. I'm just gonna shoot a group with the Meister Coogans. I'll do a little bit of testing down the road and see what kind of pellets this thing likes and which ones it it don't like. I don't I haven't really done much with that yet. I've just been kind of plinking with a can. <laughs> Sorry about my back loading this guy up. But uh, I'm kind of curious whether it's, I'm hoping it's more accurate with pellets, but if it's accurate with BBs, that'll be fine too. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do. So I have not, this does not have any kind of, uh, um, doesn't have any kind of a uh, fiber optic sight or anything. So I really need to put a little dab of orange paint on there. Let me look at something real quick. I'm going to decock this guy. Uh... I was noticing on the top of the grip here, there is actually what looks like, no, it's not, it's not, uh, it looks like a, like a scope mount groove, but it's definitely not wide enough for an 11 millimeter uh, scope mount groove there. So I was kind of hoping maybe I could put a little red dot on this thing. That would be pretty cool, but all right, enough rambling. Let's do some shooting. low and left this 
to the left, but not low. <laughs> So let me do a little bit of adjustment. So we'll start uh, over again here. So I need to go to the right some. And we need to come up a little bit. Okay, it was adjusted all the way down and it was off to the, the left a little bit. So let me put three more pellets in here. Going back to the same splatter burst again. Hopefully, I change my point of impact here a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, actually, I probably overdid it a little bit with both of them, but let's stick with that for now. It's a lot better. Not bad. That's not bad for a smooth bore snub nose revolver. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see here. I got some BBs out here. You gotta, you gotta know what to expect from, <laughs> you know, if this was a, uh, you know, a six inch rifle barrel, I'd kind of be disappointed in that, but a, a smooth bore, uh, what is the length on this thing? Looks like, uh, two and a half inches. Yeah. Two and a half inch barrel, smooth bore, two and a half inch barrel. <laughs> It is, uh, that's good results. So let's go, I got another splatter burst above that one. Let's go ahead and see if we can hit anything with the BBs. All right, that went high. It is centered, but it went high. Still high. Ooh, that was low. <laughs> Perfectly centered. All right, so overall, that wasn't bad. I had one that dropped low there for some reason. That probably was just me. Let me go ahead. So that was, those were Daisy BBs. Let me see if, so some of these guns really like these Hornadays a lot better than, uh, other BBs. So let me load up some of these Hornadays and try those real quick. And then we'll get out of here. <clears throat> it certainly is a lot easier to load these ones with both pellets and BBs than try to load those other ones because you'd have to dump them out, stick the BB in the front end of the cartridge, and then stick them back in the gun. So. <clears throat> I guess for realism, being able to load them back in there would would be okay. But for just the the function and being able to load it real quick and and keep on shooting, uh, I like the the rear loading cartridges a lot better. All right, still shooting a little high there. Low. Lost count and all the excitement, <laughs> but uh, that's actually not bad. Uh, just being able to keep them all on that splatter burst, uh, I think is, is pretty darn good. <clears throat> but uh, that is a lot of fun, really nice. 
So this one is a little bit more expensive than say like the Vigilante or the um, uh, Triple Threat, which is all kind of polymer, but uh, it looks the part, but this one really looks and feels the part as far as a replica goes. This is really, really pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> I really like it. And uh, decent, reasonable accuracy with the, uh, with the, especially with the pellets. Um, could have a lot of fun uh, doing some plinking and may, uh, like I said, I'll do some more testing, see what kind of pellets it likes, and then I'll do another video down the road uh, showing you guys some testing with uh, getting some pellets that it likes. Um, be interesting to find if uh, I could find a rifle barrel for it. I don't know, maybe it's not worth it. <laughs> but uh, it does it does have a... So when you spin this, the forcing cone actually does spin. That's why it feels like it's binding up sometimes because there's actually a, the barrel spring-loaded and the forcing cone actually does go in and seal up against the the back, the front side of the uh, each cartridge. So, but uh, that is pretty cool, <laughs> really cool. So, anyway, there you go. That is a pretty in-depth uh, review of this guy. Um, these are a little bit more expensive than than some of the other uh, CO2 revolvers out there. There are more that are more expensive for sure, but uh, nice little replica. You guys know I like my Crossman stuff. Um, <clears throat> they've had a couple of they've had a couple of fails, but uh, most of their stuff is pretty darn cool. So, hope you guys liked the video. Till next time, have a great day.